Lior Samfiro is an employment lawyer, and I thought I'd check it with him to just get a better sense of sexual harassment and get his take on it. And if he if, if he had to work with a client who was sexually harassed with it by an MP, how do you deal with that? Lior, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Hi, Bill. My pleasure. Now, some some forms of sexual harassment are just kind of obvious. I'm the boss. You come into my office, you're applying, or you work for me, you want a promotion, you want a raise, and I say, well, listen, maybe we go out to dinner, we spend the night together, maybe we'll spend a weekend away in a little motel somewhere. I think we could take care of things. That's clear sexual harassment. No one will dispute that as long as you can prove it. No, that's textbook uh, textbook sexual harassment, Bill, and, and unfortunately happens uh, frequently, as I'm sure you understand. And uh Certainly in that case, an individual would have recourse. The problem, of course, always is proving what was said, but there's recourse under human rights legislation, uh, there's recourse in the court, uh, and then you know, that is exactly what one is not allowed to do, and the law couldn't be clearer with respect to those incidents. Obviously, what we're looking at right now in Ottawa is, is somewhat different. Well, let's take the next level of sexual harassment because, you know, that was the first definition I remember ever hearing. The boss in a position of power is using sex as is using his power as a weapon to get sex from you. And you don't want to have sex with the boss. Then the, the next one became, you know, the, the mechanics who had their naked pictures up and uh, the women in the office are walking by the naked pictures that are hanging on the wall. And the guys are like, hey, how you doing, sweetheart? They they may not have had any power over her to decide whether or not she works there or doesn't work there, but they've created a hostile environment. These women are feeling that the that they, they can't work there uh, without these men leering at them and behaving in a sexual way. That's also sexual harassment, yes? Well, well of course it is. And in fact, employers have a proactive obligation to protect employees, not just women, of course, protect employees from any uh, uh, situation where they're, they're feeling uncomfortable in the workplace uh, as a result of uh, a comments, behavior, et cetera, by others. So it's not really just related to the conduct between a boss and a subordinate. And in fact, most cases are coworkers creating a poison work environment for someone else, using improper language, uh, making uh, unwanted passes, uh, using uh, physical contact that's not welcome. And the employer then has to protect the employee. And if the employer doesn't, the employer is actually on the hook for violations of the Human Rights Code. That the employee could potentially treat their employment as being terminated. We refer to that as a constructive dismissal. So the, the law is quite well equipped and, and, and very thorough in terms of uh, outlining what the obligations are of the employer in, in those cases. How does the law handle it if I'm, uh, they say, the receptionist in a workplace and clients and customers come in and sexually harass 